words of advice for graduate students center around um, Lillian Wald, who was my heroine. Lillian Wald is the, um, really the founder of modern day public health nursing. And the story goes, she was born uh, to a re reasonably wealthy Jewish family, but ended up spending probably 30 years in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, working with immigrants who really were seen as less than human in some regard. And the thing that I've taken away from reading about Lillian Wald, which I've read a lot, I used to get lost as a graduate student in the bowels of the Taubman Library at the University of uh, Michigan, I've, so I've read a lot of her work, that I've taken away two messages from her that have served me well and I think can serve others well as well. So two things. One of them is take your discontent and use it. Lillian Wald was extremely discontented by what she saw happening in New York City at that time. Immigrants were really worse seen than less than human and she was deeply disturbed by this. So she could have gone back to Rochester where she was raised, uh, lived a very comfortable life, but she didn't. She chose to go into the Lower East Side to the tenements and work in what really were very difficult circumstances. She eventually created what became known as the, as the Henry Street Settlement um, and, and the Visiting Nurse Service of New York City eventually. Um, so she took that discontent. Instead of um, sort of running from it, she embraced it and did something about it. So I think that sort of sense of using your discontent is my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice then is to stay committed to it. That's not easy work. When you think about Lillian Wald working in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, um, this was very difficult work. Extremely poor families, three or four packed in a small tenement. Um, again, you could easily run from that, but she didn't. So not only did she use her discontentment, she actually stayed committed to it. She spent 30 years in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And I think in our modern world where we can dive in and out quickly, we can jump from one job to another, we forget. We talk about the importance of having a vision, and those are important. The importance of being able to fundraise, the importance of you know, good communication skills, and I'm not, I'm not downplaying those. But I think we forget this fundamental thing of staying committed and hanging in there for the long run. And Lillian Wald absolutely exemplifies um, that sort of commitment. So that's my words of wisdom. Take your discontentment um, and stay committed to it and make changes over a long period of time. I don't think there is anything more important than staying focused on your dream. I know that sounds a little warm and fuzzy. However, nothing happens unless first a dream. If you're a higher D personality like me, we often have big picture visions and we run fast. Oftentimes, people will try and steal or take your dream away. There's a lot of negativity out there in the world that you will face. If you are a big dreamer, if you like to make change to impact good outcomes, there's a lot of people who are going to try to tell you why something can't be done. So when you get afraid, when you hear a lot of negative, you got to put your dream back in front of you again. You have to keep your dreams bigger than your fears. And you've got to believe in those dreams. Write them down. There's evidence to support that people who write their dreams down are more successful with actually attaining them. And then you just got to persist through the character builders. Anything worth having is worth persisting at. I always advise students, if you never risk, if you never ask, you will never get. You've got to dream big. You have got to risk take. The most successful people in life are the big dreamers, the risk takers, and then the people who persist through the character builders to see their dreams come to fruition. So remember, 
Think and do the impossible. Keep dreaming, discovering, and delivering. One piece of advice. I think the, the advice that I've, I'd like to share is that you need to know yourself. Before you become a leader, you have to understand what your um, strengths are. You have to understand what areas you may want to supplement in terms of um, talent around you when you take on a particular initiative to lead. Leadership is rarely just about doing what you want to do and when you want to do it. It's almost always about recognizing a need and bringing together re intellectual and social resources to analyze a problem and develop a plan and then sometimes even implement that plan. And that never goes as smoothly as you'd like. So it's really important that you understand yourself. What is it that gets you up in the morning? What what have people told you are your strengths? Maybe you're good with people, maybe you're analytical, uh, maybe you're very goal-oriented, very organized. Uh, there's a lot of different strengths that leaders need, but you need to know what yours are and then capitalize on them and then the ones that you don't have perhaps, again, find other people who you can work with um, to get the job done. Oh my goodness, each day that I'm on the job, it seems as though I pick up another uh, pearl of wisdom uh, as to how to work with people and be a steward for our profession. So I'll, I'll try to pick out one or two uh, concepts that might be helpful for an emerging leader. I, I tend to go back to um, an age-old principle that was promoted by Stephen Covey many, many years ago, and that is... Um, seek to understand, then be understood. Authentically listen to your team, your allies, uh, your opponents, um, those with different perspectives. Really listen from the heart and understand their needs, their perspectives, before you try to share your own. I think uh, if you can do that, and it's gonna help you frame your message and uh, get people to believe in your message much better if you understand them and truly listen from the heart. The second thing I would say is um, operate from a place of both and, not either or. You know, it's not either my way or your way. It can be both my way and your way. And that way you're really trying to negotiate and create a win-win uh, in any of your dealings with other people. And probably the last thing I would suggest to anybody in these types of roles is to make sure you take care of yourself first. And that's not being selfish, but frequently as nurses we tend to give of ourselves to the point of uh, robbing ourselves sometimes. And you can't take care of others or be effective if you haven't really taken care of yourself and nourished your body and nourished your mind. Uh, so I would, I would suggest, you know, making sure that when you, you book your flights and when you're scheduling your day, you're not doing back-to-back -back meetings and missing meals, uh, being away from your family and those important events that are part of your family. Uh, because you're, you're going to regret much more if you do that than you'll ever be proud of those accomplishments. I think the number one advice that I would give to any new graduate is to find a mentor, someone who shares the same philosophy that you have in nursing and also will lead you through the path or the journey that you would wish to achieve in the future. So I think as I think about that, there are probably six points I would like to make for graduate students who will become leaders in the profession um, in the future. I think the first area that's important is to build your own credibility, whether that's your credibility as a policy analyst, as a researcher, as a nurse educator, that building that credibility will serve you very well. Um, as you begin leadership activities. Secondly, I think it's very important to begin now working 
in a team. And it's very important to learn how to be a member of that team. It's very difficult to lead if you're not clear on what it means to be a participant um, within a team environment. The third thing, I think, is to listen and to respect diverse opinions and perspectives. One of the things about leadership, I think that we've all, those of us who've been around the profession for a long time have all learned, and that is it's not all about us and our own ideas, but it's really about helping to create um, a future, a pathway that involves the opinions um, of a variety of people. I think it's important to bring passion and drive and energy to what you do. Um, individuals, uh, colleagues, and people outside of nursing respect that level of passion and commitment that you bring to what you're doing. Fifth, I think it's very important to learn from mistakes and from failures. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to episodically fail. And the important thing about failure and mistakes is that we learn from them and we don't make those same ones again, although there will be new ones that we'll make. And the last piece of advice I would give is that it's very important to listen to criticisms. It's nice to have individuals praise what we do and to find what we do meaningful, but it's equally as important to listen to the criticisms that others make of what we're doing and how we're doing it and learning from those criticisms as well. I've given that some thought because it's really a very broad question and I think that I would ask everyone to reflect on why you became a nurse in the first place, that caring, that compassion, um, because I think that translates into leading colleagues, students, and to impact positively our patients, because that's really why we're here. And so I think about that caring, the passion, um, and not to lose that, um, and to pursue quality and excellence in whatever area that you are focusing on, whether it's direct patient care, whether it's teaching, whether it's research, um, administrative duties, and in that there has to be integrity um, because your word is your word and you want to make it mean something and have it valued that it is worth listening to. I think in terms of leading you can't lead unless you know where everybody's coming from. So you really need to build those bridges um, that where you try to seek the perspectives that you want to have a very diverse, but, and I mean really um, sensitive to all the kinds of things that you might even just be ignorant to sort of consider. And so if you don't build the team, um, you're probably not going to be successful. And so the team may be very different. I remember taking a, a team building uh, whole course long time ago, and I realized it translates into relationships, whether it's your significant other or your colleagues at work or your students. If you're really thinking about building everybody t to make the project work, to make the outcome work, you're going to be successful. So, you know, the reality is, is that graduate nursing students are already leaders because they've made that important decision to come back and advance their education, something absolutely we need in today's healthcare delivery system. So if I take that question and I take it a slightly different direction, what I've learned over my career is that it's really important as leadership opportunities present themselves that you be open to them. You may not, in fact, envision yourself as being a strong leader, or you may not have set out to say, I want to take this leadership position. But if somebody asks you to do that, they're telling you that they see something in you, it's a vote of confidence, and you should seriously consider it. The second thing that I think I've learned over the course of my career is that you need to be absolutely authentic to who you are. Because when one leads, when one is put in a position of leadership, if you try to be something you're not, it won't work well. 
Because what you need to know about leadership is that you can only take on as much as you can actually accomplish and accomplish well. And so those are some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Be true to yourself, listen to others when they invite you, and only take on those things that you can do well. Well, I think my first nugget of advice would be to take the opportunity to learn everything you can. And clearly, this is not limited to just the time that you're a graduate student. As you uh, take your first jobs, as you go out there and join the workforce, people may ask you to do things or you may be invited to attend things that you're kind of, I don't know if I really want to do this. But in reality, each of those is an opportunity to learn something. Uh, one of the things I realized when I became dean in a fairly tumultuous time was that every day I was using all the skills and all the knowledge that I had acquired over about a 25-year period. Um, many of you, or some of you, may have a checklist in your mind that uh, these are certain courses I need to take, I need to get this certification, I need to accomplish this. Those are all fine and good. But think about all the other opportunities that you have so that when there's a lectureship at your school or at other departments in your university, take those informal learning opportunities that are available to you. So that's really um, the first one I have. The second one I have is to work to build trust every single day. Uh, trust with your colleagues, trust with those uh, who may be working for you or students or staff and people that are above you because as you go through life uh, the trust that you've built with others first of all it becomes a way of living and a way of action for you but you have that reputation as a trustworthy person a person who does what they say a person who's honest about what they can do and can't do and their attempts that they'll make and I have to say that's one of the most important things is that as a leader, the people that you are leading and the people that you are work with, that you're working with, have trust in you. The third thing I would say is to respect yourself and respect others. Certainly uh, we have uh, and will continue to have more and more diverse groups that we work with. And I don't mean just around uh, uh, underrepresented populations or underrepresented uh, groups that are in healthcare. I mean diversity in different disciplines, in backgrounds, uh, the things that people bring to the table. When I was a youngster, I used to make the mistake of thinking that people were wrong and that surely I would convince them by arguing with them uh, about the merits of my position. I take a different approach now and that is that I really have tried to learn about the backgrounds of other people. What is their discipline's perspective? What have they learned? How different are they in the way they approach the world? And then how, you know, how being aware, respecting myself, what, what do I bring to this? And then together, uh, what are the areas that we either share in common or the problems that we want to address? So how do we, how do I then work with people? What are the things that we may share in common? Or how do I uh, cast my argument in a way that helps them realize we do share a common goal. In respecting yourself, I think this is about knowing your, your strengths and your weaknesses. Uh, I so many times have told faculty or graduate students as they're going out there and they're kind of worried and scared, but these people know X and I don't. And I say, but remember, what do you know? What do you bring to this table? What is being a nurse all about? What has your education given you? So uh, that you realize that all the skills, all the experiences that you are engaging in and will engage in, uh, bring you, you're a very unique individual who has something to give to this particular situation. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I would say to become acquainted with the notion of servant leadership or humility that uh, one of the things um, that I would say leadership is not, at least in my world, is any kind of regal activity. It is about working with people to accomplish the best that you can. It's about helping people, all of us, uh, including the leader herself or himself, to uh, actualize the, the things that they can bring to the situation. So 
We have many challenges today. Uh, we certainly will have great ones in the future. And all of you are in a position to learn now. You have many, many great mentors and uh, examples to learn from, but eventually you will weave those into the person that you become. And you may not expect that you're going to become a dean. I certainly didn't. But as I look back, I see everything that I did built to this opportunity that I have to lead my uh, School of Nursing. Okay, the first thing I would suggest is that it's really helpful to play to your strengths. But in saying that, you have to know what your strengths are. So you really have to take some opportunities to figure out what it is you're really good at, what kind of leader are you going to be. Are you a global big picture person or are you a very specific detail oriented person? But in looking at that self-assessment, it also tells you maybe some areas that need improvement. And um, I really like playing to your strengths, but there are some times when, if there's an area of improvement, to be a good leader, you're going to need to address that in some way. So for example, to be a good leader, you really do need to be able to speak publicly to some extent. And so if that's an area that's a problem for you, then you may want to work on that. But I find the self-assessment or really reflecting what am I good at, what am I not good at, and how am I going to compensate in some way, whether it's improving those skills or uh, developing a strategy uh, is really helpful. Uh, another example of a good tip would be um, really to look at the big picture and the mission or your common goal when you're working with a team and keeping that at the forefront because a lot of times using the common goal uh, helps you work through conflicts that maybe the team is having and helps you have better outcomes because conflict can be very functional um, but keeping that big picture what is our common goal in the front of the team helps kind of make sure that the conflict is functional versus dysfunctional um, also it helps build goodwill where you, you assume everybody is on the same team for this common purpose and I think that really helps uh, with the team work as well Another tip I would say would be that really valuing the contributions of people on the team and letting them know that. People oftentimes are doing lots and lots of work and then if they feel like they're appreciated and if they feel like you're noticing and acknowledging their hard work, that also goes a long way to really building a team and being a good leader. My advice to nursing students who will transition to nursing leaders is to seek out a mentor. It is to find a mentor at different parts of your career and your education. It is important to learn all aspects of the nursing profession. So with your nursing program, you can learn about um, the grants, roles, and healthcare. And as you transfer um, into your profession, then seek another mentor. Seek a mentor that can give you leadership qualities. There is, we're at a very interesting part of, in healthcare and nursing profession where there's so many things that people could be involved in. It's, we have an imperative that we have these nursing leaders and we develop these nursing leaders right now. Nursing profession has really huge concepts to look at and health is one of the overarching concepts that are important right now. Health in our workplaces, with faculty, with our patients, health in the population, healthy communities. These are some of the overarching um, concepts that are guiding our curriculum, which is another area that we need leadership. We need the leadership of uh, students coming out to look at our curriculum, look and make sure it's contemporary, it's innovative, and it includes all the components we want. Uh, we address the, co the contemporary issues of diversity and inclusion, and that's it. Remember, leadership is a service, an obligation, an opportunity for all nurses, but especially those of us who have graduate degrees. And I'm emphasizing it's an opportunity to serve. Remember, you're a leader because of how you want to positively affect the lives of the people around you. So if you're going to lead in education, you want to serve your students, 
and your faculty so that you can have the best education outcomes. If you're going to be a leader in service, in clinical service, your focus of leadership is the patient to deliver the highest quality of care that you can possibly deliver and provide the support and resources to your staff and the people you supervise to provide that care. Remember, leadership is a team sport. Each of us have important things to give as we lead, and each of us need to know when to step back and follow and allow those who have better expertise than we have in an area needed to lead for that instance. And finally, I want to leave this with you. As a nurse, you can be anything you want to be. I want to see, in my lifetime, a nurse win the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their outstanding research, and a nurse to become the President of the United States because we have been eminently qualified to do this, to lead effectively wherever we're placed.